In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. Jesus, Mary, St. Joseph, and St. Teresa, pray for us. Saint. Happy St. Agnes of Assisi feast day. I have to read about her. Probably named after St. Agnes the Martyr, the young girl martyr. Agnes does mean lamb, like the lamb of God. <laughs> Just have to practice that right there, you know? Like the blind spot, you know? Uh, I was just thinking these radiator heaters and the ceramic heaters are the ones that are going to save you the most money. These just flat out electric heaters. You know, they're not really all that great in saving money. And some of them aren't even placed correctly in your home. So you'll notice if you put your hand up, the ceiling's going to be 10 degrees warmer than the floor. You know, you've got a problem if you're heating the ceiling, you know. And I'll say and do this on a Sunday. And I'm saying it's maybe keep in mind, you know, maybe there's a little cost efficient ways to to uh, winterize your home, you know. I know when I put uh, I put double curtains on when I put this fleece stuff on the on the windows, I noticed a big difference there, you know. And even in the summer, you know. Sleeping Joseph, 
devotion. You, know, you put the prayers in, and the violin is like this. It's like a sleeping Joseph, and I'm putting my prayers in with my violin bow, you know? <laughs> the music's like the incense or the prayers <laughs> reaching up to heaven, you know? answered by by you know praying with the with the music you know <laughs> to care about our parents and their divorces. Oh, who cares? I tell you, put your prayers in this violin. I don't care if they've been divorced for 50 years. God can heal that marriage, you know? Let's put our prayers in this violin. Because remember, priests that tell you that, oh, just forget about so-and-so. Oh, it's just your daughter. It's just your son. It's just your parents. It's just your grandparents. It's just, well, pretty soon they'll say, oh, it's just you, you know? What do I care if I don't care? If that priest doesn't care about your relatives, he doesn't care about you either, I'll tell you that. I know it said Bishop Strickland, he was the provincial vicar or whatever. I think that's the person, is that the person that was a stamp on the elements? I mean... You know, he's not free from sin either, folks. And we got to atone for the Holy Mother Church whatever way we can, you know. Everyone's got some responsibility in this, this church, you know, this deep church problems, you know. Because you touch pitch, you'll get defiled by it. And we've all been touched by the pitch. And we continue to get touched by this pitch, you know, in our homes, families, spouses. If you're suffering with your spouse and marriage, it feels like it's going nowhere, believe me. Pick up a violin and start playing. Let's put our prayers in here. Not just for our parents and their messed up marriages. <laughs> you know, I mean, it sounds horrible. But, uh, you know, for our marriages and all this and that, you know. deep church that wants to run away from its problems. I mean, they can't stamp an annulment fast enough on marriages. They really can't. I mean, that's their solution to everything is walk away, you know?
like a car dealership, you know. If you got money to give them, they'll answer the phone. If you don't have money to give them, you're not going to get anywhere, you know. are just the same if not worse so there's no reason to schism folks believe me the schism's got all the problems of the deep church not more it's just a lie it's a big lie to think that it's okay to schism did saint joan of arc schism <laughs> you just might not live as long you know from the stress <laughs> Of being in the deep church, you know, but the, believe me, the SSPX seem around that they've got these greedy people in the hierarchy, just like, and it's even worse, you know. <laughs> because the people in the schisms they claim to be poor, but at least these noble sort of priests, yeah, they take vows of poverty, but they're not claiming on the pulpit that they're still poor, although some of them do. But uh, some of them just don't. So at least, at least you can see the devil coming. You know, at least he's not hiding anymore. Whereas in these schisms, you really get the devil is hiding so, so well. Like Father Terry said, an articulately dressed wolf. And I hope he was referring to his own order. The FSSB is serious need reform. See that in huge letters. The priests are just, they're just cowardly right now. They don't want to stand up. They don't want to get canceled. You know, they don't want to cause a, a fuss. You know, they don't want to get you know, famous for con controversial reasons. They don't want to be in the newspapers and all that. You know, it's kind of, it's cowardliness what it is. But don't worry, God will clean it up. <laughs> God will, God will clean them up, you know. Because remember, it's not the evil works of the wicked priests that offend our Lord the most. It's the silence of the good priests. Just think about that. That's the thorn in his forehead, of the, of the crown with thorns. That's the biggest thorn. And it's, we don't really trust you, Jesus. We don't trust that you're going to protect us if we really uphold your law publicly. We don't really trust you're going to put that shield around us. That's kind of the bottom line there. It's a trust issue. And it has to do also... I've had some abuse within, like, the guilt problem. You know, I think Father Tara is being guilted out of his faith by these these um, metrosexual priests that, you know, finance industry priests, you know, that think they've got upper hand or whatever. I call it intellectual cult. But there's no true knowledge, you know. It's like the New Age stuff. The, you know, the rabbis there are falling into this new age, and they want it for power and stuff, and they're going to put up this antichrist and call him the Messiah and stuff. But that is a grave error of the Jewish people. They need to accept our Lord. You know, our Lord's sitting there waiting for him. You know, for a long, long time. And they get jealous and want to kill people who are Christians. Okay, that makes no sense. You don't like Christians, you're jealous of them, but you don't want to. But you're going to follow this fake religion instead and have them all, like, put down. I mean, it just does not make any rational sense. It's like, what, if you like Catholicism, Christianity, if you like Catholicism so much that you're so jealous of everyone who's Catholic, then why don't you just become a Catholic? Well, there's reasons why. It's because they don't want, if they value more their personal reputation amongst their, their, their you know, society. They don't want to be ostracized and whatever they don't see they don't see the fruit you know I think it's a la 
lack of knowledge of the faith and of also eternity. They don't really see, they don't see the spiritual fruits of it. They're thinking too much about material things and what do I want now and money and whatever. Money, friends, sex, power, whatever. I kind of have to slow motion with this arm because this hand's moving faster, but since I'm on this part of my bow, you know, it's going to feel like slow motion with my right arm. Version of Michael Heifetz. That is going to be the easiest one in the Heifetz family because he's most receptive. Like I said, he didn't really want to do the channeling spirit thing. He thinks it's kind of garbage. And uh, he just puts up with it because of his wife and stuff. But he really does think it's garbage. He would be the first to convert. But the problem is, is that, you know, pride gets in the way, anger and, and all his other generational curses, all his bloodline stuff, tries to, tries to not open his heart up to that. And also maybe the the fear, the fear of getting hurt and stuff. But, um, you know, the, the, that's what the devil wants. He wants to bind especially the fathers and the fatherhood. But if, if my life it converts, wow, that'd be so awesome. That'd be so amazing, you know. If a lot of men converted, that'd be amazing, you know. We'd see a whole new world. <laughs> What if Steve Popkins escape said, I don't want to do this. I don't want to steal from John anymore. I'm just, I'm not going to do this with his wife anymore. I mean, who's to say he wouldn't repent and do that? It would be hard because he's being bought off by my mom. You know, it's basically a sex and money deal for him. He gets to be a little boy for the rest of his life, doesn't have to work, and uh, drinks beer and plays guitar. 
have sex with my mom and uh why would he want to quit stealing when he get you know when he gets so many benefits it's it's really hard to get men like Steve Popkins to grow up really extreme difficulty you know that's why I said it's easier to convert people like Michael Heifetz you know Is, is a serious call to my dad to get his spiritual life in order, uh, regardless of what his wife's running around doing with her, you know what, you know. I mean, he could just, like I said, he, he needs to um, become Catholic in his heart, truly. Like, go to daily Mass, take Holy Communion every day for his wife, uh, for her conversion and stuff. He needs to start living the life of God, you know, totally chaste life stuff. Um, you know, acting out in revenge by stealing from other people's families and stuff and breaking other families apart. Because that's what my parents signed up doing. Now they're on a rampage breaking anything and everybody's families apart. You know, including their kids' families and birth control and drugs and, and all this, you know. They're like immature little babies, like hippie generation babies, and they're on the road to hell. That's for sure, you know. <laughs> said this so many times but the priests are right along with them the priests can't wait to jump on that slide slip and slide down to hell with them i have no clue <laughs> i mean it almost seems unbelievable doesn't it <laughs> It's horrible, you know. I mean, every trick in the book of the devil right now, S changes or whatever. I'm sure they're trying to do all sorts of things to him, and uh, that's why they they really don't like the rebukes. They don't like the, you know. perverts would try to pervert their kids, you know, and unfortunately it's just so unseen in society anymore. Uh, you know, these yay rights or whatever, you know, once you get a, a kid hooked on that stuff or believing it, the next thing is they want to ask change, you know, and this is going in, in Christian families too. They're suffering from these perversions, you know, no one's, uh, no one's exempt from these problems, you know, there's a reason they probably... You know, don't ever want to pick up the phone. It's because they've got got evil problems, you know.
my mom started getting working outside of the home. It wasn't that too much long after that that she t- changed her whole uh, spiritual beliefs. She she said she was going to hire a gay man, her coworker, to babysit Carrie and stuff. And it's just like she never would have done that when I was in first or second grade. I mean, my mother was so um, she wasn't very protective of me, but she had at least a little bit more morality, I mean, not much more. Kind of came out, but she didn't want me hanging out with kids that had divorced parents because she thought the influence was bad. And we're talking to someone now that ripped her own husband through the court system uh, and slandered him for years. So we we've got to see there's huge, huge, huge family problems, you know. <laughs> as much as you can.